Hello and welcome to the third video in a series on simple regression. In this video we'll be uh, showing you the formula for a confidence interval for the slope and also how to interpret that interval. In the previous video we did a calculation and interpretation of the t-test on the slope. Uh, recall we're using uh, a regression of ice cream sales in hundreds of dollars versus temperature, high temperature for the day in degrees Fahrenheit. We already ran the regression output. I did data, data analysis, regression, and after inputting the variables in their respective locations, right here, the default is typically 95%. I changed that to 90. So the output cleaned up is right here. By default, Excel always gives us 95% confidence intervals for the intercept and the slope. But if you ask for it, you can get a different uh, confidence level. So I asked for 90%. Here's a, uh, the 90% confidence for the 90% confidence interval for the slope. Okay, so uh, let's work this out in a little detail. So in general, we want a 100 times 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for the slope. And uh, we're talking about the true slope here. So that's beta 1. Okay, so that's what we want. <clears throat> and the formula we use for that, um, right here, uh, this particular formula is specific to a 90% confidence interval. Uh, the format here is the, we need to look up a t value from a t distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom corresponding to our degrees of freedom residual here in the ANOVA table. But uh, the generic formula says we need to look up the 1 minus alpha divided by 2 percentile. So if you want a 90% confidence interval, alpha is 10%. So you split that and subtract it from 1, and you actually look up the 95th percentile in your t distribution on page 298. Okay, let's see if we can duplicate these numbers right here. So B1 is our point estimate, which is 0.433. I'll just... Uh, retype, well, I'll just grab it actually from the output here. And then I need to find a, the t value from the a t distribution with 18 degrees of freedom. So either look in your um, t table or you can use a function in Excel. I type t inverse uh, parentheses 0.1 for the alpha 10 percent and then comma uh, the degrees of freedom, 18 in this case, and it gives me the t value. And your book will have it to three decimal places of accuracy. Okay, and then we need the standard error of the slope, and that's right there. Okay. So, uh, this is plus or minus in this cell right there. I'll just insert Okay, but we need to do the math ourselves here. So I'm going to take um, this cell again, and then uh, this cell, and the margin of error will be this times this. Okay, so uh, we're almost done. Now I take 0.43, I'm going to have a lower bound. and an upper bound. Okay, so the lower bound will be equal to the point estimate minus the margin of error. And the upper bound is equal to the point estimate plus the margin of error. So here's my 90% confidence 
interval for the slope. Okay, and here's the interpretation. Oh, by the way, it matches, right? These two cells over here are the same. So I just duplicated what Excel gave us. So uh, we start off by saying, well, my best estimate of the impact temperature has on sales is for each one degree higher the temperature is, sales is higher on average by $43.30. That's my best single point estimate. However, this is an interval estimate. It gives me a range of reliability for what the true slope really is. So in other words, for each one degree higher the high temperature of the day is, I expect my sales to be higher by some amount between $32.90 and $53.80. And we notice that zero is not contained in this, in this interval. Both endpoints are positive. So this is actually equivalent to, to doing a two-sided test. Uh, we would reject the idea that the true slope is zero because zero is not in this interval. Actually, this is better than a two-sided test because uh, anything not in this range would be rejected. So we don't have to focus on zero in, in particular. Okay, let's uh, make a quick look over here at the 95% confidence interval for the slope. And you see it's actually wider. And the reason it's wider is because to be more confident, you need to widen your range of uh, values. Uh, the formula, why it's larger uh, formula-wise, is because you would have to look up the 97.5th percentile instead of the 95th percentile. So you're going farther out into the t-distribution. Otherwise, you would have the same coefficient and standard error. Okay, so we do have a little control over uh, creating our confidence intervals. Larger sample sizes tend to make the standard errors smaller, and therefore your interval is smaller, which is what we like. Uh, what else? Remember, standard error of the slope is also dependent on the standard deviation of your x variable and the typical fluctuation around the regression line. Typically, we don't have control over those numbers. Uh, standard deviation of the x variable is not provided here. Uh, you would get that from descriptive stats but we do have S. Okay, so that's it for confidence interval for the slope.